This is TJ Pastilli with Ages of Fandom, joined by the iconic voice of Beast from the X-Men animated series and the upcoming X-Men 97 show on Disney Plus, George Busa. George, I got to ask you, so it's been 27 years since the original series ended. So what was your initial reaction when you heard the series was coming back? And also, what was it like stepping back in the studio, the same studio, to do Beast again? Well, it was ecstatic. Uh, to say I was euphoric is an understatement. I mean, uh, <laughs> we discussed uh, the fact that we'd like to revisit X-Men when we started doing the comic Cons, And this was when Eric and Julia Leewald wrote their book previously on X-Men. And then they gathered a small number of us to go and do a Comic-Con in New Braunfels, Texas, which was going to be the first X-Men reunion. And there it was where the, the first subject was breached about, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we got back together and uh, did another go at the series? And Julia and Eric were really uh, up for it. They they thought it would be a great idea. And then, then when Disney bought Marvel and uh, put X-Men back on the air, and it became the number one show <laughs> instantly, that kind of put the fire under us to say, yeah, we, we could revive this show easily. And it happened. So it's one of the greatest gifts that I could ever imagine to be able to revisit something that meant so much when we were doing it and to come back and to have another go at it almost 30 years later. Well, this is, uh, it's fabulous. And you don't have to look young. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just your voice. And I mean, we're just so lucky for you guys to come back as well. Cause I know for me and a lot of people out there, your beast is kind of the definitive version of beast. When I read the comics, yours is the voice I hear. So I'm curious, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the Beast from the show and Beast from the comics are kind of very different characters, especially in recent X-Men comics. So I'm curious, what are some of the core aspects of Hank McCoy to you and your interpretation of the character? Well, basically, he's a very good man. You know, he wants the best for anybody he's in touch with. He wants the best for humanity and mutants to get along. He's very well read. He was uh, very intelligent. He's a scientist. And uh, I think he's an optimist. And mm -hmm. so these are the things that he brought to the character and th that I brought to the character is to try and keep a positive attitude and uh, to look for the best in all the situations and in people. But, uh, you know, when push comes to shove, you've got to defend yourself and you've got to look after your own. Mm -hmm. and uh this is what beast does yeah and i that's i mean you explained it perfectly that's one of the reasons i really love the character and i think he's a great example of a mutant who can't hide their powers and looks terrifying but really encapsulates some of the best parts of humanity so i'm curious the x-men have always been a kind of important uh way of talking about social issues and some of those issues seem more relevant today than ever so i'm curious in your opinion what do the x-men represent to you and why do you think that this show is still relevant today well, I think all you have to do is pick up a newspaper or watch the uh, the news to find out all the reasons why it's relevant today. Because I think we're in worse shape than we were 30 years ago. There's more intolerance. There's more hate. There's more violence. There's more war than with, the, you know, back then. There were small little uh, set twos here and there. But now we've got major wars happening all over the world. And uh, people can't get along and uh, so much crime and violence in the city and so much hate against everybody else. This is why we're more relevant today than we were 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I also got to ask, so I know that you were one of the castmates that were uh, very much into comics growing up. And I know uh, that was up until your mom actually threw away your comics. So I'm <laughs> curious, what were some of your earliest exposures to the X-Men, whether it be Beast or just the team as a whole? Well, it was X-Men number one. I remember going to the, uh, at that time there was a five and 10 cent store mm -hmm. that sold the comics. And uh, I was reading Superman comics because 
Superman was something that I grew up with in uh, on TV. Uh, I watched the TV series as a little kid religiously mm -hmm. through the 50s. I even jumped off the roof of my garage with a blanket on my back <laughs> and was disappointed that I hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there, George. We've yeah. all been there. <laughs> but I remember when X-Men number one came out. And I read it and, I, you know, I, it didn't really resonate with me the same way as Superman did. So I, I didn't really follow it along, but I knew about it. And he, occasionally I'd pick up an X-Men comic book and read it. And so I was familiar with him. But uh, where am I going with this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I said, I'm just curious about your early exposure to the X-Men. And also, I got to ask you, too. So, Reese, I don't know if you're aware of this, but recently, Beast made another big screen debut in the most recent The Marvels movie from the new uh, MCU stuff. Oh. So, I'm curious, with uh, Beast coming into live action now, I know that you had a small cameo in the first X-Men. If uh, Kevin Feige or the MCU guys came at you, would you be up to a reprising a live action cameo for some sort of X-Men stuff in oh, the MCU? As long as it wasn't uh, anything severely, you know, action driven. <laughs> uh, Get you up you on know, the those, wire set? Those days are gone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would be open to any, you know, little cameo or whatever like that. But, uh, you know, I'm happy doing voice acting right now. I have no illusions of wanting to go and sit in front of uh, a, a movie camera for 16 hours a day anymore. Mm -hmm. Quite happy to just go and do the voice acting. Yeah, not going to reprise your role as the truck driver then? <laughs> well, for one thing, uh, nobody's asked. And there's been <laughs> five other movies, if not more, featuring the X-Men since the very first. I mean, that that was 2000. Mm-hmm. That's lifetime ago. It was like, holy mackerel, 24 <laughs> years ago. Well, I would love to see you show up in something. I'll keep my fingers crossed. And my last question for you before we get out of here, I got to ask. So I know one of your favorite episodes from the original series was Beauty and the Beast. And yeah. I got to ask, I don't want you to spoil anything or what I expect you to. But is there anything that you've done in this new 97 that maybe can rival that or, you know, come well, close to a favorite moment maybe? Not yet. That's okay. all I can say is there there hasn't been a Beast Falls in Love episode. Or like a standout moment to you from this new iteration? Well, I really can't talk about anything that mm -hmm. uh, was not aired yet. Absolutely. But I wouldn't be my doing my job if I didn't try to yeah, ask. No, a little everybody bit. asks. But, <laughs> uh, all I can say is, you know, you got to be patient. Of course. And uh, you won't be disappointed as far as I'm concerned because the series looks great. The writing is spectacular and the animation is stupendous. So what more mm. can you say, ask for? I don't I can't ask for more. I can't be more excited. George, thank you so much for joining me today. You can catch George at Toronto Comic Con on March 15th to 17th, as well as in the X-Men 97 uh, premiering on Disney Plus on March 20th. Make sure to follow Agents of Fandom on all socials, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast for more X-Men 97 interviews and coverage. Thank you, yeah. George. It's been an okay. absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.